Welcome everyone, Ace of Spades here, back from my vacation. We're gonna talk about this hurricane build that can be played by everyone, no uniques, no farming required. You can just roll onto the PTR, disenchant a bunch of items, and just simply play the build without having to worry about anything. Even with no gear or anything, when I fully stack my hurricane, it's still hitting for over a million damage. Which is pretty good damage. It's definitely gonna be a decent and fun build to play for the new seasons. Hopefully they don't nerf it and in fact I hope they do fix some of the bugs. So for example you can only activate your hurricane twice without having to wait for the passive to reset. I'm gonna show you exactly what I talk about in a second. Let's go to town and let's talk about how the build works, the bugs, how to get it and how good it's gonna be for the next season. Okay boys, let's take a look at how the build works. It works based off a passive that has been changed, Provocation. After 16 seconds of being a werebear, your next non-defensive skill will overpower. Meaning that because Hurricane is a channeled skill that is always active, the entire duration will be overpowered. Very simple. Also, as you can notice, the duration of my Hurricane is 16.13 seconds. And the cooldown is 14.8, meaning that I can always have Hurricane active, and this Hurricane will remain overpowered. Unfortunately, there is a small bug, and after the second time you activate Hurricane, it will not be overpowered again, unless you, of course, can, you know, be a werebear for 16 seconds and keep this provocation buff up. So it's not really an issue because uh, you're gonna have 32 seconds. Uh, of hurricane duration in which uh, you will stay where bear most of the time actually all the time because you get uh, damage reduction and other stuff from being a were bear so you will get this buff back up uh, and you're able to keep overpowering forever it's not an issue it's more like annoying that you have to be careful about not wasting the provocation but other than that i'm thinking this is gonna be fixed for live fingers crossed the build is very nice and works without any uniques Let's talk about the gear requirements for the build. Anyone logging in to PTR can play this build right away by disenchanting a couple of characters. And of course, the only thing you have to do is have a one end and off end that you enchant with hurricane duration. This is very important. Without this, you're not gonna have enough hurricane duration to reset the cooldown in time. Also, you wanna have totem with the cooldown reduction a hell with cooldown reduction and of course an amulet with cooldown reduction you do not need to upgrade any of those items and uh, just the basic version of the items will be fine so very easy to very easy to get on very easy to start with this build very fun clear the t100 with it uh, no problem you have a lot of hp as you can see 56000 hp is pretty high almost 57000 let's go over the various uh, aspects so we have on the Elm, 8% increased dodge chance, and when you dodge, you gain 45. Also have increased dodge chance and successful dodges restore your maximum HP. Now, those uh, dodge chance do, are, are not reflected on uh, the stat sheet, but it should in theory work, and if it doesn't work, I'm sure it will work for live. Kind of hard to test dodge, but um, it should be okay, especially for live. I've reported the bug at least. It says you have increased dodge chance, so that shouldn't be an issue. Then we have, of course, make sure that you have the correct stats on the items. So you want to have life if you can and cooldown reduction. And dodge chance probably is your third best choice. Chat, same thing. You want life, uh, dodge chance. Uh, you cannot have cooldown reduction on this one. You can get the armor or a resistance. It's really fine. On the gloves, uh, we are going to be having a stampede and also get crit chance, uh, get close damage, get max life, uh, and we do, not, we do not need attack speed as hurricane. Attack speed doesn't really matter for the tick. On the pants, uh, I have might, uh, basic skill grant damage reduction, very hard to get damage reduction nowadays. Dodge chance, max life on it, and you can get resistances if you want, even though willpower is very important and we're gonna see why later on. We have uh, Wind Striker to get move speed on crits. Uh, I find this to be better than Ghost Walker as it's active more easily. 
you want to enchant the move speed on it and try to get ranks to hurricane if you can on the boots for your one hand you want to have a shepherd and you want to have a mace for overpower damage as you can see i have hurricane ration unfortunately i have damage to card control but in theory you won't have damage to close enemies as it will work with your thunderstruck paragon legendary node on the off end we're gonna have elements just because there is really nothing better to use unless you have uniques and this is a unique last build we have damage to close quick chance max life again remember we do not need attack speed for this build that's why we don't have it damage to card controls on rings again you want damage to close Crit chance, max life, have very important stats. Damage to close, overpower, crit chance. This is pretty much the perfect ring you want to have. Can't get better than this one. And on your amulet, have cooldown reduction, uh, move speed, uh, and close damage, which are important. Uh, of course, HP is also pretty good. And uh, let's take a look at the aspect. We have uh, here the Tempest aspect uh, because it's a 50% modifier. Again, the Edge Master, the Changeling Dept is pretty good as we can poison with Poison Creeper. As you can see, I will reset also the cooldown of Poison Creeper with Pack Leader, meaning this is pretty decent uh, as uh, the chance of resetting the cooldown is quite high. And you can keep your enemies poisoned with it and have a high crit chance, which I find sorry, to be quite powerful. We have, of course, Wariness for damage reduction, uh, max life and uh, crit damage. Uh, for our double boon and we're gonna be taking uh, masochist uh, this build would work better with a tempest roar but it's okay because also that way with your hurricane wood and venom and you wouldn't be needing to use uh, poison creeper also you'd, you'd be healing a lot more with masochist so a tempest roar i think would be a really good addition to the build also with that you could run Hunter Zenith and Hunter Zenith would allow you to keep resetting the cooldown of your debilitating roar so that's a really strong combination to run for defense let's take a look about uh, the talents uh, while I'm running them we have Yursin Strength as it gives of course max life which is very important uh, damage while you're healthy and overpower damage you really cannot get any better than that we take full points in heightened senses, natural fortitude, and quick shift only one point unless you have Tempest Roar. We take three points in Unrestrained. We take three points in Defiance for more damage to a Hurricane. A rank to Trample. I like to have Trample for the Unstoppable, and also it's a bear skill, and a little bit of a mobility skill. Provocation, of course, no need to run Mending max points uh, your hurricane and take damage reduction or if you do not no, do not need damage reduction having more vulnerable is not a bad idea i take endless tempest for the duration i take my triple raven my clarity as you can see it's pretty decent as you get more crit chance when you use uh, a pet ability poison creeper with brutal poison creeper one point in the walls uh, three points in fortitude for the resistances, 3 points in Iron Fur. Digit Great Gate would be great with a Tempest Roar, but again, non unique build. And we take 3 points in Maul. For the Paragon board, instead, uh, I decided to run Territorial because uh, damage, damage to close enemies and DR are super important nowadays, as DR it's hard to obtain. And in this build, we are also running Thunderstruck, meaning that, as you can see, Damage to close and damage versus distant are very important as you will get a very big multiplier thanks to that. So for the first board we take Territorial, the second board we take Dominate for Overpower. Inner Beast is a great board for Intelligence. After that uh, I'll be taking Shapeshifter which uh, I have to test a little bit more but I like the Critical Strike chance. It causes uh, your Hurricane to be more reliable. I have to test it further if it works with Hurricane, it's kind of hard to test, but this should be a separate 25% crit chance. So if you fail your crit chance roll, you still have a 25% crit chance to hit that one, which I find to be quite powerful. And also the fact that it gives the rare node bonus is really good as you get the natural magical damage 
and a massive amount of HP, and HP of course means damage for overpowered builds. We take uh, Earth and Sky in uh, Thunderstruck, I take uh, Heightened Malice, and I take Werebear for damage reduction while in Werebear, you spend in Werebear most of the time, and you can always activate Werebear with Maul, making it pretty easy. Survival Instinct, uh, I would say though, if uh, you run uh, Tempest Roar and Under Zenith, you can use the Bullet in Roar instead of Maul and just spam that one and change a little bit of the build for that. Survival Instinct, very good, and I have my exploit here as uh, it will interact well with uh, the magic nodes that give you damage reduction from vulnerable enemies. The start of the fight is the most dangerous. So as you can see here, I'm gonna have a one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six boards, and that's you know, pretty solid. I find it to be a really good setup, also this way, this is the last board we get, and it has uh, 800 willpower cost, uh, which is not a problem, because uh, this season we're gonna be having a lot of uh, willpower, it's damage reduction, while well, fortified the damage reduction is very hard to obtain nowadays, as uh, all the damage reduction has been removed from gear, besides unique items, making damage reduction sources from Paragon very important, and Druid has a lot of it. So this build is pretty strong, pretty tanky, and very fun. If you guys enjoyed the video, I'm gonna be testing more builds. Of course, I will not have time to optimize the builds and full uniques for every build in just a few days of PTR. So, unfortunately, I cannot give you the full min-max build for Hurricane this time. But I will be now testing other builds like Shred, Tornado, Boulder, etc. Let me know in the comments if you have a favorite build you would like me to test, and I will be working on that one next.